So you're gonna wanna go to your game scene. We're gonna add a new child node. This is gonna be a camera 2D. And the first thing we wanna do when we add this camera 2D is make sure that current is on. Now I'm gonna press this add script button to this camera and we're gonna add a new script. We're gonna define a variable, target player. We're gonna set that to null. That will be a reference to the player that we are targeting. Under our ready function, we will be setting target player to global.playermaster, which we will define later. That will be the current player that we are controlling will be global.playermaster. And that will be a reference to our player that we will be able to get through the global scope and be able to access anywhere. We will set that up in a second. We don't have that set up right now. And in the process function, we will be checking if global.playermaster is not equal to null, meaning that global.playermaster exists. It's it's set to a reference of the object. Then we will set a global position to that player's position. So some of you guys might be thinking, why are we have this target player variable if we're not using it? We're actually going to be using it in a later tutorial when we actually get it. So you're spectating the players, right? So you die and you want to spectate a certain player. That target player is going to be used. But for right now, we're just going to be using global.playermaster. We'll just have that set up for later. Now we're going to save our camera script. We're going to go to our global script. And in this global script, we're going to be sending a variable for player master. And we're going to set that to null. And we're going to go in our player. And in our ready function in our player, under everything else right here, we're going to do a yield. And this yield is going to wait until the tree's idle frame is going. So essentially what this does is this makes sure the node is fully initialized. Because in the ready function, the node is initialized. But like not all the things like, for example, the networking in the node is all set up at this point. So that's why we have to wait till the idle frame and then we can start using the multiplayer stuff like is network master if i didn't have this yield function right here and we just try to do if is network master in the ready function it isn't set up as a network to node yet so it's not going to be able to use that now in our player script we're also going to scroll down a little bit and under the sync function instance bullet do a sync function update position right here and it's going to take an argument of the position that we want to update to so global position will update to this position and our puppet position will update to this position why are we putting this function in here this update position function well when we actually make it so the players spawn at specific spawn points on the screen you want to make sure that that player's position gets updated on both your client and everyone else's client now we're going to scroll down all the way to our destroy function and if we are the network master then we're going to set player master equal to null so this is just making sure if our current player that we are controlling gets destroyed we want to make sure that the reference to our player in the global scope is set to null so this just lets everyone know that hey this player is no longer usable because it's dead right so it's null and then below this destroy function we're going to do an exit tree function so this gets emitted whenever you change scenes or the scene gets destroyed and we are the current network master meaning we are the current current player that we are controlling then we'll set player master equal to null just in case if something happens to the player if we destroy it we want to make sure hey this global player master thing should equal null because sometimes we might not have to call this destroy function we might just call q free and we just want to make sure that global doesn't have this reference anymore uh that was all we were adding here and the camera 2d just moves to our global player master position so when we play the game the camera should follow our player all right we have two players i hit start game and look player a you can see his camera following him now let's go to player b and also his camera is following him so you can see that the camera has been assigned to the correct player and player b's camera isn't starting to move to player a because it knows that this is the current player that we are controlling so that's everything with our camera system everything works there so now let's configure our spawn locations in our 2d scene so i'm going to add a new node it's just going to be a regular node we don't need a node 2d we just need a regular node we need some kind of folder container kind of thing this is just what a node is and i'm going to rename this to spawn locations and i'm going to add a child node and i'm going to add a position 2d i'm just going to call this position one and i'm just going to set up the positions i have on my other end honestly you can throw them wherever you want position x 512 position y 512 for this one and then i'm going to duplicate this with control d and it's going to automatically rename it to two and i'm going to go to the transform position on two and this position is going to be three five eight four by five twelve because now it's all the way out here we're actually going to expand our uh tile set to to all the way out there now we're going to duplicate this one and under three in our transform position it's going to be at five twelve and the y position is going to be one thousand seven hundred ninety two now i'm going to duplicate this to four and i'm going to set the position of four to three five eight four by one seven nine two i'm going to duplicate four and that's going to make five five's position is going to be 2048 by 512 
and duplicate number five. And the position of number five is gonna be 2048 by 1792. There you go. These are how I configured my spawn locations. Now you can see we only have six of them. So the max that I'm doing is six players. You could obviously go up as however many players you want. You can do as much as you want. I'm just gonna be doing six just because that's how I configured the spawn points and that's easiest for me. Now I'm just gonna draw my tile set, my tile map just a little bit further and I'm just gonna use the bucket tool and there you go I have my tile map set up and we will go over how to make it so the player won't be able to just walk off in this direction I'll be there will be physical barriers in the map that will block you from doing that but that's basically our 2d scene all set up with our spawn locations and everything in place so we're gonna save this in our game script we're gonna be setting up a function set up players positions in this function we're gonna set up a for loop for player in persistent nodes dot get children so this is gonna go through every single child of this this persistent nodes auto load uh, scene that's in our game. It's gonna go through all of those. It's gonna go through all these nodes. We're gonna check and make sure that this is actually a player. So we're gonna check this child is in the group player. We're gonna be going through every spawn location of the spawn locations children, right? So this is that node spawn locations and all the children are each of the positions on the screen. So it's gonna go through a for loop of every single one of those children. And then in this for loop, we want to check if the integer of spawn location dot name so we're getting the name of this spawn location so if the name is one we want to convert that to an integer so it's no longer a string we're going to be saying that equal to current spawn location instance number now we haven't defined these variables up here so let's actually let's go do that real quick so go over to the top above this ready function and you want to define current spawn location instance number you want to set that to one and you want current player for spawn location number and just set that equal to null now let's go let's go back to this if statement right here we're converting the spawn location's name to an integer, right? Because the current spawn location instance number is an integer, and we want to be able to check if that's equal to that. So this is essentially saying right here, if the current spawn location that we are iterating on, because we're going through a for loop, so if the current spawn location that we're on right now is equal to the current spawn location instance number that we are also on, and we're checking that this current player that we're going to be spawning is not equal to our player. Because remember, we are going through every player in our persistent scene we want to set every player's position to a new position we got to make sure that we're not seeing the same the same player to two different positions this just makes sure that the last time that we set a spawn location or a player is not equal to the current player that we are iterating on then we're going to call a remote procedure call on that player it'll update that position so remember when we went in our player and we added that update position sync function right here that makes sure everyone's on track that's what we're using update position so we're calling that we're calling update position to all of the clients for this current player so that all the clients know where this player is and this update position is going to take an argument and that argument is the position that we're updating to so we're updating to our current spawn location that we are iterating on in our spawn locations that get children dot global position we're going through all of our persistent nodes that get children so if we go to our persistent node scene just imagine that we have a lot of players in this scene right here so we go through the first one the first one let's see the ID is one because it's the server. So then we go through and we make sure it's an actual player. And so that's like, all right, we are iterating on player that has the ID of one. So now after we select that, we go through all of our spawn locations and spawn locations that get children. We go through every single one of these. So we are on iteration one of the spawn location, which is X position 512, Y position 512. Remember our name is one right now. So we do an integer conversion. That's one and it's equal to one. So this, this argument is being fulfilled because we are on our current location number and current player for spawn location is not equal to player well player is that id of one it's that player right that's in this persistent node that's the first node that we are iterating on this is still set to null so we currently haven't moved that player yet that's all that this is getting track of so we haven't moved that player and this argument gets fulfilled too because we haven't moved that player yet so then we tell our player to update their position to this current spawn location which is spawn location one right here dot global position which is 512 by 5 512 and the player moves their position to 512 by 512 and it goes back through this loop again so that's essentially what all these arguments are above this so let's actually progress the loop right now because right now it's only going to go through one player because we haven't updated these values so current spawn location
location instance number plus equals one because we want to go back down to spawn location two because we started at one now we're going to two and we're just going to keep adding to that number every time we iterate and we're going to set our current player for spawn location number so this is the last player that we that we set our spawn location for so for instance that was player one we just set his spawn location so we can't set that for player one anymore we've already assigned player one a position so we can no longer change his position we have to wait for player two and then we can change his position because we haven't updated this to him yet and so that's essentially what this is doing so now you can save this and this will update all of our players positions all right so before you test this i just realized that we need to actually activate this function because we have this function here and it's not getting activated yet so in our ready function you go down to the bottom you check if we are the current network server and then we're going to set up our players positions we're going to call this function if we are the server because we only want the server to update our positions we don't want each client to start updating everyone's positions because then it's going to be calling all these remote procedure calls we just need them called once on the server all right so everyone's in i'm going to hit start game and you can see everyone is immediately set to their spawn location and i can move around i can shoot i kill player c and he is dead and there's a glitch where you could still shoot when you're dead so in our player script just scroll all the way up in our player script and when we are checking if we're network master and and this basically is all the code needed for having control over our player and be able to move him if we are the network master and we are visible because if we are not visible then we shouldn't be able to shoot meaning if we are not visible we are technically dead in the game all right that should be everything i hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial i'll see you guys in the next one